this example, we're going to calculate the inverse Laplace transform of this particular function. So we want to calculate the inverse Laplace transform of pi all over s plus pi all squared. Now, inverse Laplace transforms uh, arise in all sorts of problems. Most commonly in this section, when we're trying to calculate the solution to uh, an initial value problem. So essentially, first of all, we transform the problem to a new algebraic setting, solve the algebraic problem, and then we want to transform everything back to get the original solution. And that's where an inverse transform comes in. Now, with the Laplace transforms and their inverses, it's common to use a table. So down the left-hand side, you've got functions of t and the corresponding transforms. Okay, so here we want to calculate an inverse transform. So we sort of want to go down this um, column and then work our way to the left. So you can see here, um, if I try to find this particular function down here, I, I actually can't see it anywhere. But what I do have is this down here. Okay. So a would be pi, and I've just got an extra factor of pi in this thing. So if I look across here, I'll actually find the transform. Now, this particular entry may or may not be in your table. If you're working from a small table, I would, I would bet that this, this particular one isn't actually in your table. So I'm going to show you how to do this using uh, the first shifting theorem, which is here. Okay. The inverse transform of big G of s plus a is this e to the minus a t times little g of t. So that, that's the focus of this particular presentation, is to show you how to use the uh, first shifting theorem to calculate inverse transforms. OK, so how do we do it? Now I'm just going to write FST for first shifting theorem. So in this context, a is a constant. So the first shifting theorem says that the inverse transform of this shifted function is the following product include, uh, involving an exponential and this g of t, where little g of t is the inverse transform of big G of s. Okay. So what we do is we work out this first and then multiply through by an appropriate exponential. Okay. So What we'd like to do is identify A and big G. So if I look in here, what do you think A is going to be? OK, just sort of by lining this up, you can see A should equal something like pi. And if G of S plus pi is this, what's big G of S? Well, essentially, it's, it's pretty easy in this one. All, all I have to do is cover up that bit. It's going to be pi on s squared. OK, so a little bit of algebraic manipulation or a little bit of algebraic insight is a good thing for these kinds of problems. Because you know, identifying the, the value of a is pretty easy. But going from big G of s plus a to big G of s, sometimes students have a problem with it. OK. So let's calculate the inverse transform of this. And then we'll multiply through by the uh, exponential. OK, so what is the inverse transform of pi on s squared? Well, because the, these transforms are linear operators, I can actually break this up into the following. I can bring a constant out the front. So what I would like to do is now look down my table and see, OK, where is, what is the inverse transform of 1 on s squared? Well, if I look here, it's in the third line. The inverse transform of 1 on s squared is t. So it would be pi times t. 
Okay, so we use tables to basically, when calculating transforms, to save ourselves integration. And it's even more important when we're calculating inverse transforms because we don't actually really have a definition of what the inverse transform is in the Laplace setting because the inverse transform uh, involves uh, knowledge of um, comp the uh, functions of complex variables. Okay, and we don't quite have that in this course. Okay, so if we apply the first shifting theorem the inverse transform of this is going to be the product of this with e to the minus at and a's uh, pi so it's going to be e to the minus pi t times pi t. OK, so a little, a little note on method. We identified A and big G. Okay, then we determined the inverse transform of this, say from a table. And lastly, we applied the FST. Okay, it's just a special product. Okay, so if you want to solve the more difficult problems with Laplace transforms, it's really important that you're on top of these basic shifting theorems.